Israeli airstrikes hit the historic Lebanese port city of Tyre on Thursday. The Israeli military had warned people earlier to evacuate from more areas of southern Lebanon, including a built-up Palestinian refugee camp near Tyre. Israel invaded Lebanon at the start of October, after nearly a year of trading fire with Hezbollah. The militant group began firing rockets, missiles and drones on northern Israel after Hamas October 7, 2023 attack triggered the war in Gaza. Iran backs both groups. Israel had warned people to evacuate from large areas of the country, including major cities in the south and east. Over a million people have already fled their homes. Israeli strikes killed seven people in eastern Lebanon, according to Lebanon state-run national news agency. Another strike killed a man on a motorcycle on the coastal highway between Tyre and Sidon. The news agency also reported a strike on a car on a main highway running through the mountains outside the capital, Beirut. It said the strike closed the highway, diverting traffic through nearby villages. There was no immediate word on casualties. Ukraine's defense forces assume that the Russian army, with the support of North Korean troops, will launch an offensive in the Kursk region within the next few days. The New York Times reports this with reference to the words of the deputy commander of Ukraine's 61st Mechanized Brigade, Lieutenant Colonel Artem Kolodkevich. According to the publication, Kolodkevich, who fought in the Kursk sector, said that his commanders had warned him that an assault might be imminent. We were warned of an attack in the near future, probably in the coming days, the Ukrainian lieutenant colonel said. At the same time as the publication writes, Russia has deployed about 50,000 troops in the Kursk region, while Ukraine has about 30,000 soldiers. According to experts, an additional 10,000 North Korean troops could allow Russia to gain the upper hand over Ukrainian forces. What usefulness North Korean troops will bring to the battlefield remains to be seen, experts say. Viktor Kevliuk of the Center for Defense Strategies says coordinating their actions with Russian troops will be difficult because they do not speak the same language, have different training and are unfamiliar with the terrain where they will be fighting. Former German ambassador to Washington Wolfgang Ischinger agrees with this opinion, emphasizing that this could become a huge headache for the Russian army, which is not accustomed to having large foreign units under its command. Thus, Viktor Kevliuk from the Center for Defense Strategies believes that North Korean troops will be used in attacks on Ukrainian positions in accordance with Russia's long-standing strategy to realize numerical superiority in personnel with artillery support. North Korean units will storm the most fortified positions of the Ukrainian and Russian regular troops will strengthen the captured objects and lines. At the same time, former British military attaché in Moscow and Kyiv, John Foreman, believes that the North Koreans will remain on the defensive and strengthen the front line, leaving some Russian soldiers free for offensive operations. If they are used for direct attacks, he added, the reliability of North Korean forces will be questioned by the Russians and their use could endanger Russian forces. The Ukrainian army has also issued a Ukrainian-Korean phrasebook for its troops to reach out to North Korean soldiers and urge them to surrender, according to a Ukrainian officer who spoke anonymously. Amid purges in Russia's defense ministry, generals close to former head Sergei Shoigu have begun informing on each other to the FSB in hopes of leniency Russian news outlet Commerçant reported, citing its own sources among law enforcers. 
Military counterintelligence has reportedly detained Major General Alexander Oglobin, who previously headed the first directorate of the main communications directorate of the Russian armed forces. The arrest was prompted by testimony from his former superior, Deputy Chief of the Russian General Staff, Lieutenant General Vadim Shamarin, who is accused of receiving kickbacks from the Perm telephone plant Telta during the procurement of special communications equipment for the needs of the Russian Defense Ministry. According to Shamarin, he ultimately split the bribe received from the company with Oglobin, a fact he decided to disclose as part of a plea deal with investigators. It is possible that Shamarin also sought revenge against his former subordinate as Oglobin had testified against him in the Telta case while Shamarin was only a witness. As Commerçant has learned, the former head of the first directorate of the main communications directorate of the Russian armed forces, Alexander Oglobin, was arrested again thanks to a plea bargain concluded with another general. According to Commerçant, 58-year-old Alexander Oglobin was detained by officers of the FSB Military Counterintelligence Department. This happened after Deputy Chief of the General Staff of the Russian Armed Forces, Chief of the Main Communications Directorate of the Armed Forces, Lieutenant General Vadim Shamarin, testified against him as part of a pre-trial agreement. According to the Main Military Investigative Department of the Investigative Committee of the Russian Federation, from April 2016 to October 2023, the latter received bribes in the amount of at least 36 million rubles from the CEO of Perm Telephone Plant Telta, OJSC, Alexei Vysakov, and the plant's chief accountant, Elena Grishina, for actions within his authority aimed at increasing the volume and range of products of perm telephone plant Telta, OJSC, as well as for general patronage in the service. According to some sources, Alexander Oglobin was the first to testify against General Shamarin. At the same time, he himself, together with his brother, also a former military man, Alexei Oglobin, initially appeared in this case as a witness. However, Alexander was exposed as an intermediary in the transfer of bribes to his boss, while his relative, according to Commerçant, remained a witness. Although Shoigu's name has not yet appeared in the corruption cases against Russian generals, it is possible that someone among them will eventually implicate him.